Hey YouTube, um, just going to have a, a quick video on uh, this chainsaw and um, I've had it for five years now and um, I don't go in in the woods and cut my own wood and limit, uh, limit out and so on anymore but I do, um, I do get my wood long, I buy it, uh, it's eight cord, I usually about eight cord a year and uh so this this chainsaw cut um 40 cord plus uh you know i know some you know face cord or whatever so i should stipulate but uh 128 cubic feet is what i'm saying is a cord so eight cord um a year uh some issues well i mean if you're going to go in if you make if you make a living cutting wood and uh, this is not the saw for you uh if you're a homeowner that you know you do go in and you cut your wood and and bring it home and so on uh this saw can uh you know can can work well for you for a hundred hundred and sixty bucks or something like that um it's a pretty good deal so that's i'll show you the model yeah, it's 42 cc which is pretty good um i run a, a 18 excuse me 18 inch bar uh and i just i just replaces it with the the chain that uh, it came with uh, i believe it's a 62 link uh anti-kickback chain um is there any issues well at first if you buy this chainsaw be prepared for for a while i mean it works great but after you say you you cut say four cord maybe eight cord you'll you'll see that uh it may be uh harder to start and it it takes a lot longer for like warm up to to kind of keep it idling uh, that's the only thing about, well, not the only thing, but one of the things about pooling, um, as some people say, you know, uh, pooling, because you do pull a lot <laughs> to get it going, uh, is you got to adjust it. And right now, I don't know if you can see that, but in this hole here, you'll see a, a low and a high. And in there, there's two screws. And you probably already know all that, but if not, uh, there is two screws. And you'll have to adjust these screws a few times. Like, it, it's not going to be a one-time deal. Um, you know, and uh, you, well, you don't have to have this particular, you don't have to have this tool. Uh, I got it from China. It's pretty cheap. It's spline in there and it it fits uh, on the screws properly uh before i had this um i took the cover off here and i cut with the dremel i cut two slots in the screws so that i could use a normal screwdriver but uh yeah but you will have to adjusted a few times it's one of those things you know and i i understand um they're all like it unless they fixed them in the past couple years but um they do lose their setting so no big deal uh but now for two and a half years now three years i haven't had to touch it and frankly you prime it four or five times and it never never fails like maybe the maximum maybe three pulls not even usually it's the first or second pull every time she has start but that wasn't the case after it, you, i used it a while so don't want to beat a dead dog here but you will be prepared it's not that big of a deal um there's lots of videos out there to teach you how to do it but 
you know, don't get discouraged if I know people say, oh, pooling, pooling, but <laughs> in a lot of ways, this is a Escavarna because um, I forget what, who bought who, but I think Escavarna bought Poulin. If I understand uh, the parts guy that I talked to one time. Anyway, uh, now that's one issue. What else? Uh, this, the gas cap. Now, a lot of people has problems. I haven't. But I do find uh, if you tighten it just a little snug, uh, after a while, yeah, you'll need, but you'll need uh, to get your wrench and, and put in the air. Where am I? And, and just, you know, take this thing off because it, it's it'll be jammed on there pretty good but i find that if you just you put it on snug but not too snug just just enough to so it don't leak or vibrate out she's fine um same with the oil no problem uh there is another issue with this particular model that i have and that is you fell up your bar bar and chain oil and you know you could you could cut for five hours you know just keep going keep going filling it up and everything but when you put the saw down to you know grab a bite to eat or uh you know or just put it in its case even and you're done for today so you go on in and you spend time with the wife until the next day you figure you're going to get at it again but when you comes back the next day be prepared for for this oil uh the bar and chain oil reservoir to be almost empty well in my case it's always empty so i try not to fill it up if i know i'm going to quit after you know say another 10 or 15 minutes i won't fill this up uh, i'll just you know run it to well usually i the gas uh, runs out first, so um, I won't fill it up and cut another five minutes or ten minutes. I'll just leave it because I learned that when you comes back, I mean, every bit of it is going to be leaked out. Why, I don't know. It, it, it's a pain in the ass, but not so much anymore because I know it's going to happen. But it worked great when when you're using it like it's not like it's buggered up in any way but it does leak quite a bit um when you stop using it and just let it sit so and i've heard people say well you just loosen off your burn chain oil when you're done and it, it equalizes it out well i've tried everything and it still leaks you know so that's two issues um Power wise, um, well, you know, it's full of snow, but uh, let's see. You wouldn't be able to tell. It's, it, I was going to show you the, the eight quart of wood that I have there, but it's all full of snow, so you can't see it. But um, I've cut uh, with this saw, I've cut, I, I kind of like getting big stuff. I always tell the guy, give me the big, you know, some big stuff. I got a log splitter, so it's not any of that big of a problem anymore um but uh i've i've cut oh 20 inches many logs 20 inches in diameter um yeah diameter <laughs> i was thinking uh circumference but no diameter 20 inches in diameter and and this thing um no problem as long as the chain is uh, sharp, like she don't bog down or nothing. She just goes right right through it. No problems. Uh, and, and pretty quickly, too, I must add. Um, but I, I don't force it. I just let the, you know, the, I let the chainsaw do its job. So uh, so that's not an issue. I, it is 42cc. But uh, I know some people say they have problems. Maybe so. Maybe I'm lucky, but... I'm going to have to say that 
this particular model, I would buy another one any day. Uh, there's no dogs on the front, so it's, for me, it's no big deal. What else? It's not, it's not the most durable saw, I don't think. I mean, as you can see, it's, uh, everything is plastic. And, I mean, if you're going, if you, you're, you make a living cutting, cutting wood, this is not something you can just toss around, right? Uh, because if you do, it won't last a season. <laughs> it, it is, it is plastic and it, it ain't the, the best that way. Uh, you know, the cylinder and all that is pretty much the same as any other brand. Um, the brake works really, really well. And there is one issue that I had when you take the cover off, there's one, two, three, there's four screws. You take the cover off to, if you want to get in and change the spark plug or whatever. Um, when you put this thing back, I don't know why they did this, but uh, when you put this thing back on, be careful. There's a, the wiring here, uh, in the casing here, the, the hood, if you want to call it that, you know, there's a plastic flap, you know, that fits in blah, blah, blah. As you know, it fits together in a certain way. The, the wires, when you put this back on, will stick right in the way. And when you screw this down, you'll be nipping your wires. I found that out, and I was careful too, but when you put it on, you might have the wires out of the way, but when you put it on, the wires will fall, and you can't see because you're putting it on, obviously, so I uh, took some zip ties, and uh, I had to tie it to a different area, reroute it, and it, it's okay now, but I did learn the hard way because uh, she was running rough and I took this off and seen that the wire was bare and it was because of that so I don't know why they did that but anyway like I say it's not the most expensive saw on the market so just trying to if anybody is thinking about buying uh, you know this particular saw just trying to help you out sorry for if my voice sounds like Kermit the Frog I got the got the flu um, what else? That's about it. For I, I haven't really had to do anything with this saw. I did replace um, the uh, sprocket. Uh, for some reason, I don't know if it's because I had the the you know the chain too tight. It don't seem to be. Um, I don't know if that was it. And it was wearing a groove in the sprocket. I mean, I wore a groove in it after eight cord. And so it must have been something that I was doing. Um, but I do I do have a video on, well, I should have a, a video that explains it better. But I do show that it's possible to weld up your sprocket. And I haven't had, I haven't bought one since. Actually, it lasts longer since I've welded it than the original. So uh, maybe it's the material that it's made with. Um, I haven't had any chainsaw that actually have went through the sprockets the way this one did. However, the fix is just weld it up yourself and it works, works better than the original, to be honest with you. So, um, so don't be alarmed if... You notice that the grooves are pretty deep in your sprocket. They're not that expensive. I got it for 22 bucks, but yeah. So overall, I would have to say that this is a, a very nice chainsaw for a person, like I say, that don't depend on it for a livelihood. And if you're, you're in there cutting your wood and, and you take care of it, you don't toss it around, it's fine. So, uh, yeah, so what else what did I do with it? Not much. Uh, oh, uh, one thing I will say, 
Um, it, it says to mix the gas 40 to 1. Or is it 51? <laughs> let's, see, let's see here if you can see that. 40 to 1. But uh, why, why am I mistaken that? I, I got a... I also want a pool in there trimmer, and I think that's 50 to 1. But, um, yeah, make it 40 to 1. Um, I thought that this one was 50 to 1, but it's the trimmer that's uh, 50 to 1. Any, any um, equipment that you have that's 40 to 1, from experience, the I've seen that the the piston, the bore gets scarred easier. I know it might sound crazy, but but uh, yeah, forty to one. Uh, mix it fifty to one. It's not going to hurt anything. It, it's not like you're going to be standing in a big cloud of smoke, and it's just extra uh, lubrication for the piston as well. That's my opinion on that. Other than that, uh, just a video, quick video on. Um, the sort of a review with this uh, particular model um, no problems so if you keep in mind that you will have to fiddle around with this thing for the carburetor excuse me um, and it's not just where you'll just adjust it one time <laughs> like be prepared uh, be prepared to fiddle with this thing for a while until you get it right but when you do get it right um, I just put a piece, a bit of, uh, uh, what was it? Not crazy glue, but some sort of a glue that I had around. It wasn't epoxy. Maybe it was epoxy, just a little dab on the screw, each screw. And cause I knew she was well broke in and, and I haven't had a problem in two and a half years. I haven't had to touch it. And so just, a be prepared for that. Because it isn't annoying and a nuisance. Thanks.